Okay, this is our Algebra 2 practice test 1, or review number 1. Perfectly paralleled or aligned to the actual test. Question by question, the same types of problems in that order. So let's look at number 1. Uh, you'll have to rewrite an exponential expression as a radical expression. This denominator is going to tell you what kind of a root you have. It's a seventh root of 9 but we're going to be raising it to the fifth power. You look at number two, this is a square root. There is an understood two down below. So as an intermediate step here, you could say this is one over three to the five over two. Again, that index, that number in that little crevice always goes in the denominator. Uh, so it's three to the five over two, but that's down below. We're going to raise that up. This would become 3 to the negative 5 over 2. Okay, we're going to move over to solving some problems now for number 3. Uh, to get rid of a second power, we're going to take a square root on both sides. And when we take square roots, please do understand there will always be a plus and a minus. Now, it doesn't take much to see that the square root of 64, I hope we all know, is going to be 8. But you have to remember, we really have plus or minus 8 here. This is going to be two different equations. You'll have x plus 1 equals 8, or x plus 1 equals negative 8. And as we solve, we're going to minus a 1 on both sides. We get x is equal to 7. We have to subtract a 1 on both sides here as well. Negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. So we do, in fact, get two solutions we get x equals 7, or x equals negative 9. For number 4, when you're taking uh, an odd root, and that's what we're going to have to do for number 4, we will not have a plus or minus on both sides. Uh, to get rid of a third power, we have to take a third root, and uh, we're going to just, again, take the cube root of negative 64, no plus minus, Lots of times kids wonder if this is where there's no solution because we are dealing with a negative. Negatives are allowed inside of cube roots, however. So if I press math and come down here to number 4, we can say what's the cube root of negative 64. Quickly, we just get an answer of negative 4. As we move on to number 5, uh, we'd, of course, have to take an even root on both sides. And we'd take a fourth root. And whenever we take even roots, there'd be plus or minus. That being said, I want you to see we're taking the fourth root of a negative number. Now, I hope you're going to know right off the bat, immediately, there's going to be no solution. But look, even if you forgot that, the calculator would remind you. You can press 4. Whenever you need to take a higher root, you'll type in the index first, press math, come down here to number 5, and you'll see quickly that the fourth root of negative 1 will not be able to be computed. It's non-real. Uh, so what we're going to write down here is that there is no solution. Okay, moving on. Uh, please do pay attention to these... Uh, indexes. We have a fourth root here, uh, but let's do a quick little factor tree, or really this is a division tree. Uh, divide by your prime factors, divide by a 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 2 doesn't go into 9, but a 3 does, uh, and it goes in three times. You can see on this little diagonal, we'll have uh, 2 times 3 times 3. You look at 27, obviously 2 doesn't divide in, but a 3 does. Here you get a 9. Here's another 3 times 3. So we have the fourth root of 3 times 3 times 3. Now again, the whole idea with working these problems out is that you can take the multiplication of these two fourth roots and join them into one radical. And uh, so I'm going to just make one root. And I have 2 times 3 times 3. And then I have uh, the three threes over here. So in other words, I'll have five threes all in a row. Um, but the index tells you so much. It's telling us, in essence, to look for four of the same number. 
and we do have four threes here. Uh, the way this works is that whatever we circle, we can cross it out, bring one of those items out. What we didn't circle was a two and a three. Two times three would get you a six. So the final answer is three, fourth root of six. Please realize you need to include that index. Don't write three radical six. That wouldn't be correct. That's saying it's three times the square root of six. As we take a look at number seven, uh, before you do anything, you could very well just turn this into one radical. Uh, turn it into the third root of 162 divided by 2. And very quickly with a calculator or just in your head, you can see that we've got uh, the cube root of 81. Now we can break down 81 just as we have in the past. 2 does not divide in, but a 3 does. 3 goes into uh, 81 27 times, and we have 3 going into 27 9 times, and we have 3 times 3 times 3. So four threes all in a row here. And uh, this time we have a third root, so we're looking for three of the same number. Again, regardless of what kind of root, the index tells us uh, how many we have when we circle that number of items. We can pretty much cross it out, but bring one of them out. We're going to be left with 3 cube root of 3. Okay, so for number 8, as we look at number 8, uh, all of these items are going to get raised up to the negative 2 thirds power. So I'll take 8 to the negative 2 thirds power. Uh, a power to a power is going to get multiplied. Uh, so you'll have negative 6 times negative 2 thirds. Here we'll have 9 times negative 2 thirds. And uh, again, just to, to help you out, if this is what's been uh, slowing students down with the multiplication of fractions, do that on your calculator. Negative 6 times negative 2 thirds, you can see quickly, is going to be a positive 4. Uh, likewise, if I had 9 times negative 2 thirds, you can see that's actually going to be a negative 6. Uh, you know, 8 to a negative power, you could say I need to flip that. This is going to become 1 over 8 to the 2 thirds. And very quickly, you could even raise 8 to the 2 thirds power. You can see you'll get a 4, but that 4 is going to be down below. Uh, bring that y to the 6 down also because it's negative. Keep your x to the fourth up on top. And here we have it, x to the fourth. Down below we have a four, and we have y to the six. Okay, as we move on to the second page here, as we look at number nine, we really have like terms. It's kind of like 5w minus 3w. These radicals might look more involved. But if I gave you 5w minus 3w, you'd say it's 2w. Well, very much the same idea. This is 2 square root of x squared y to the third. That being said, we're now going to look at this radical and see if we can simplify it. It is a second root, so let's see. I'll have an x times an x. I've got y times y times y. So because it's a square root or a second root, I'm looking for two of the same item. So uh, out comes an x, out comes a y. So I'll have two x, y. What didn't get circled is that lone y right there. So we'll have two x, y, radical y. OK, for number 10. Tell you what, let's start breaking 16 down with a little factor tree. We could say 2 goes into 16 8 times, 2 goes into 8 4 times, 2 goes into 4 twice. Looks like we have four twos. So I'll say 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Looks like we also have 5x's. So I'll count those out with the 5x's. We'll also have 1, 2, 3, 4 y's. And what we're going to do, again, is follow this index. We're looking for three of the same item. 
three of the same factor. Every time we've got three of the same, we can circle and uh, realize that we're going to bring one of those out. And uh, whatever we don't circle is going to be left inside. So an x is going to come out also. We're going to have two x's inside. That's x squared. We bring one y out. And we're going to have a single y remaining. So just double checking, I made uh, three circled groups. I'm going to have to pull out a 2, an x, and a y. I've done that. Inside, I didn't circle the two, the two x's and the y. I have 2x squared y. Don't forget, this is still a cube root. Don't write this as a square root. That would definitely not be correct. All right, as we move on to number 11, uh, let's get our x alone. We can minus a 1 from both sides. And uh, 17 minus 1 is 16. And then we're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. Uh, the reciprocal of 2 thirds, of course, is 3 halves. So I'm going to raise the left side and the right side to the 3 halves power. Tell you what, without too much work, we can go 16 to the 3 halves. I think you'll see quickly you get a nice answer of just 64. Now please watch out. We can't just say that we're done. We should do a check. We're going to store 64 in for x. And then we can type in x, raise it up to the 2 thirds power. Don't even need to hit alpha y equals. Hit plus 1. And let's just see if we get 17. If we do, we're good. And it does check out. So in other words, when I type in x, this left side becomes 17. That means we do have a legitimate answer. You really do need to check that. Very often you're going to find that there is no solution. To number 12, subtract a 2 from both sides. You'll have negative 7. You need to get rid of a square root. To get rid of a square root, we raise to the second power. Notice I'm putting parentheses around the negative 7. Negative 7 squared, negative 7 times itself is 49. That's very tempting to want to stop and just say, I'm done. But again, for these problems, you should do a check. I'm going to store 49 in for x. And let's check the left side. I'm going to go second square root of x. Move that over, hit the right arrow, hit plus 2. Now, if we're right, we should get negative 5. We don't. We get 9. So the check fails. And when the check fails, you're going to say there's no solution. Please be very, very careful. I think a lot of times kids just want to say, oh, this problem will be a no solution. In all truth, sometimes it works out. Okay, let's keep going. For number 13, I uh, just want to tell you that uh, you want to work on the inside first. And as we do that, we need to find f of negative 3. So we'll go f of a blank equals blank squared minus 2. So f of negative 3 is negative 3 to the second minus a 2. That becomes 9 minus 2, which is 7. In yellow, that is really a 7. So I'm really trying to find g of 7. So my second part of the problem is to take g of a blank equals blank minus 3. Find out what that g of 7 really is. When I take 7 minus 3, I get the simple answer of 4. That's my one and only answer. Please don't think that you should write down the number 7 also. It's just one singular answer. Okay, as we take a look at number 14, g of f of x. On the inside here, there's no work to be done. Uh, you can notice that you know, I don't plug a number in to f of x. But f of x is this formula that we saw up on the top. It's x squared minus 2. So I need to plug x squared minus 2 into g. g of a blank equals a blank minus 3. So when I plug in x squared minus 2, I'm going to plug in x squared minus 2 here. x squared minus 2 minus 3 Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. 
you'll get 